Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, where we connect you to ranchers and beef industry enthusiasts who can help you build a more profitable operation and improve your lifestyle. Are you looking for a community of ranchers who support and challenge you to be more profitable and proactive? Then sign up for our monthly Rancher Mind events. Rancher Minds are mastermind events for ranchers to come together once a month and find solutions for their own and the industry's challenges. Stay connected by following Cattle Convos on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and never miss an episode or event update by signing up for our newsletter on casualcattleconversations.com slash newsletter. If you get value out of this episode or any episode, drop a comment or tip me by using the link in the show notes. With that, let's see who our guest is today and connect you to a new resource to improve your own operation and lifestyle. Well, thanks for joining me today. It's exciting to get to talk about this outside of class and other research projects and share it with my listeners a little more. Well, I am just really excited to be here and chat with you. I know we've worked together in the past related to the topic, so actually getting to dive in and talk about some of the questions we have today related to brain soundness exams and just overall bull management, I think uh, is going to be a great topic, especially for the time of season that we're moving into. Um, you know, bull season is upon us, so it's really exciting to get our listeners and, and, and producers thinking about the topic. Yeah, absolutely. And bull sale season is now and, you know, we'll talk about it more, but just important to get those bulls rechecked before they turned out. But before we dive into breeding soundness exams, how about you talk about what your role in the industry is today? Absolutely. So um, <clears throat> I am the beef cow calf specialist at University of Nebraska Lincoln. And so I started here at UNL in January of 2020. Um, so what I get to do is work with students on campus. I've got a teaching appointment uh, where I get to talk about all things cow-calf management. And then also get to talk to producers on the daily. Um, just about general management, I, I really like to focus on bull and heifer development as well as really targeting some of those nutritional and reproductive interactions um, that ultimately target our cow-calf producer profitability. Well, awesome. A lot of exciting stuff there. You get to work with a lot of different people, a lot of varying levels of people. So that's exciting. So, but with that, so we're talking about breeding soundness exams, like we talked about a little bit in the intro. So what is that BSE? What is that breeding soundness exam? Yeah. So a breeding soundness exam, uh, originally has been developed by the American Society of Theriogenology. And so what they have is a set of minimum guidelines uh, where they're going to evaluate a bull to ensure that he passes that that exam. Uh, basically to say he's a satisfactory breeder, you can turn him out. While we're evaluating physical and uh, semen quality, we feel that he is capable of getting the job done. And so that breeding soundness exam really um, is a point in time measurement that's going to give us a little snapshot in where where that bull's fertility is at. Well, awesome. So, I mean, obviously we want satisfactory breeders, but I mean, that is a huge value and of huge importance for ranchers to be getting their bulls tested because, I mean, the impact of if you turn a bull out and all of a sudden he has bad semen, I mean, that's very detrimental when you look at your fertility or your fertility rates, open cows, etc. at the end of the year. Absolutely, you know, and so when we think about this snapshot in time, right, we want to make sure that our timing is important when we're getting that evaluated. And, you know, at the end of the day, for our satisfactory breeders, we, we have a, a set of guidelines that those veterinarians are going to cover. And so what they look at in terms of physical characteristics, so they're going to evaluate feet and legs, teeth, eyes, um, take a, a once over on body condition score of those bulls, 
Um, and then we start to dive into more of the reproductive side. And so we'll evaluate um, those internal accessory sex glands and so start palpating, making sure there, there isn't any inflammation or, or damage to some of those um, accessory sex glands. Um, and then we start to move into a scrotal measurement and, and testing and palpating the, the, the scrotum to make sure uh, there isn't any swelling or damage to, to those testes. Um, and then at the end of the day, what really counts is that semen evaluation. And so for a bull to be a satisfactory breeder, he needs to have um, a 30% progressive motility score and a 70% morphology score. And so ultimately when we think about um, those two numbers, motility, we want to make sure that progressive is moving in a linear line and so those uh, bull sperm are moving, they might be spinning, um, but at the end of the day they need to be able to uh, reach that oocyte, right? And, and so we need to, to make sure that they can move through that track um, and, and get to that target egg uh, to ensure fertilization. And so that's pretty critical when we think about evaluating um, those sperm characteristics. And then morphology ultimately at the end of the day um, really is looking at um, you know, any abnormalities, um, any weird tails, uh, distal droplets, um, really thinking about um, any major or minor um, abnormalities that ultimately are going to impact fertility. Uh, when we think about some of those morphologically abnormal sperm, um, these are usually associated with male infertility, um, which ultimately is going to be fundamental for determining that quality of, of that semen. And so when we can really identify these bulls early, um, those are usually our most common reasons bulls um, are classified mm -hmm. as um, unsatisfactory or potentially deferred breeders. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's a lot of things I'd like to dive into on some of those fronts, but since, you know, you just talked about the morphology side now, is that genetic? Is that something where even if he could get some bread, could he potentially produce future bull calves that would also have bad semen morphology? Like, what does that look like on the genetic level? So, on the genetic level, when we think about um, just fertility, um, it's a pretty lowly heritable trait. Um, however, when we think about... Um, just looking at defects in that sperm, um, some of that may be impacted in terms of nutrition. Uh, some may be um, insults or injury during winter um, that may be impacting that overall maturation of that sperm. So there's a lot that goes into um, production of that sperm um, and ultimately those environmental and genetic factors that all play a role. And so, um, you know, for me, uh, we're really targeting and, and looking at some of those nutritional impacts. Um, but you know, diving onto that genetic side, um, you know, if you if you do have bulls that are um, look fairly um, highly adept to having some issues, um, there may be some reconsiderations when we think about overall performance um, and semen quality of those bulls. Because especially when we think about collecting multiple bulls for AI sires, um, you know, versus maybe natural breeding. Um, a lot of that can get filtered out when you think about defects or um, maybe lower quality um, semen. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're, you are targeting those goals um, related to some of those um, genetic markers you're looking at. Awesome. So, kind of taking a couple steps back, right away you mentioned your body condition score of bulls before they turn out. What is that ideal body condition score before turnout? And, you know, how does that need to be evaluated throughout the summer, throughout that breeding season? Because those boys are working when they're out there. So let's talk about that for a second. Absolutely. Great question related to body condition. Now, um, sometimes we forget about our bulls and, and adding them to our, our condition scoring, uh, you know, outline or spreadsheet at the end of the day when we're looking at our cows. Um, bulls are, are the same kind of beast where we're targeting that five or six body condition score. Um, you know, we'll uh, have some bulls that are maybe a little fleshier, a little um, on the pudgy side of, of condition, 
Um, and then we'll have some bulls that, you know, are, are losing some condition a little bit. But the, the big target is making sure that they're in adequate condition moving into the breeding season. And so uh, there, there's been some work um, out of Canada and across the state that have tried to really measure what that loss in bull body weight and condition, condition looks like. Um, and upwards of, you know, as low as 100 pounds and upwards of maybe three to 400 pounds, um, there's a pretty wide range in terms of, of body weight loss during the breeding season. And so if we keep that in mind, if we have bulls in a moderate condition, we know that if they're really working and we set our stocking rates appropriately, um, we're going to have some condition loss in those bulls. Um, and so what we've, um, you know, during my PhD working out um, at North Dakota State University, had opportunity to, to work with some of our mature bulls. And um, really thinking about uh, this concept of bulls either losing or gaining weight. And uh, what we really started diving into is, um, you know, if we get bulls overly fat or a little heavier conditioned, you know, up in the sevens to eights versus um, you know, fours and fives. Um, what does that look like in semen characteristics overall? Um, you know, BSC when we think about um, just condition and those semen characteristics. And so, uh, some really interesting data coming out of there. That's been an ongoing study. Um, definitely, I'll, I'll include that link for you mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. Uh, but really interesting how we can focus on recovering those bulls. Um, and making sure that we're in that five to six body condition score. Because at the end of the day, we do see some changes in semen characteristics based on changes in body condition. Awesome. Well, and then the other point that you brought up that I want to touch on quick. So you said scrotal measurement. So why does scrotal size matter? Why do producers need to look at this when they're purchasing bowls? Yes, so scrotal circumference measurements is a, a component of the BSC. Um, when they're doing that physical exam, they're going to then check and, and measure the scrotum. Now, in, in part of those minimum guidelines for our BSC, um, bulls need to meet their minimum scrotal measurement based on age. So when we think about scrotal measurements, um, our 15-month-old um, bulls need to at least meet 30 centimeters in diameter for that scrotum and then upwards of um, that that measurement starts to, to increase the older those bulls get and so once we hit bulls at 24 months or older uh, then what we see is they need to meet at least 34 centimeters in diameter. Now um, there's been some work looking at um, some of the relationships between scrotal circumference and age of puberty um, and and there's a high correlation there with scrotal circumference and um, puberty in both their their male offspring or in those bulls and uh, age of puberty in their heifer and their progeny and so um, that's a great measurement if you're thinking about puberty in your females if you're developing heifers um, and, and females for your operation or maybe others, that's a great measurement when we think about um, fertility and puberty. Well, awesome. So with that, you know, I think we've really covered about anything, the wide array of it, why it's important. So is there any upcoming research on this topic that you're excited about and would like to touch on for a minute or two? Absolutely. So I think, uh, you know, we're, we're working on some collaborations right now um, at US Mark, so that's in Clay Center, the USDA Meat Animal Research Center, uh, where we're looking at yearling bull development. And so looking at yearling bulls rate of gain and those impacts on seam characteristics, and then ultimately trying to follow these bulls through uh, in terms of longevity and overall performance um, and how that impacts offspring. Um, and so uh, with that collaboration, we have scientists from North Dakota State um, Cal Poly looking at some behavioral work. Uh, we have scientists from uh, Texas A&M AgriLife um, and then also have some scientists from Fort Keogh um, and USDA up in Miles City, Montana. So uh, it's a, a, a new and uh, maybe um, you know area that um, a lot of these researchers have really kind of shifted gears to that paternal side of research and so uh, what we're really targeting is um, some of those producer questions of, 
you know, how these yearling bulls are being developed for bull sales and or how should we be managing these bulls at the end of the day when we get them home and then transition out into that breeding season and subsequent breeding season. So um, I'm really excited about that, um, that apl applicable research that we're, we're seeing here uh, with this, this data set of how can I provide some research-based data to producers to say, yep, exactly how you've been doing it for umpteen years. Uh, this, this is right, you know, and this is how we can make sure that these bulls um, stay in the herd, they're successful, um, and we're meeting those markers for development. Well, exciting stuff. So as we wrap up, let's just kind of quick recap, you know, the main point of this episode. So producers need to get their bulls. Um, evaluated by their veterinarian. Um, pretty simple, use that relationship you already have. And about how far in advance again do they need to do that? Yeah, so when we're thinking about getting BSEs done, um, generally recommend four to six weeks prior to turnout. That lets uh, you determine if you need to find any bulls. Um, and also is um, an opportunity where if we did have any injuries or frostbite issues in the winter time, um, and or maybe we got a really early bull sale uh, BSE done, um, really encourage producers to, to take a look at those bulls again prior to turnout, um, just because a lot can happen um, from you know January, February, March until May, June, July when breeding season is. So usually that four to six window um, usually meets uh, a majority of those goals. Alrighty folks, well this episode should be coming out in about April, so if you have those bulls, make sure to schedule that with your veterinarian uh, four to six weeks out in advance and make sure uh, your guys can get the cows bred this year. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And that's a wrap on that one. Thanks for tuning in again, and I hope to see you on the next one. You have a great rest of your week, folks.